he says nuh-uh to the pricing. President Trump says nuh-uh to affordable technology. And the 9 and 10 series are saying nuh-uh to your system. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Wednesday, January 29, 2025. And as a reminder, we did announce the launch of our RTX 5090 PC giveaway over on our Twitch stream. Thank you to everybody who tuned in for that. It's going to be running for the entire month of February. But in case you want to check out how to enter that, you go to Twitch tv forward slash uft tech and type the code exclamation point giveaway into chat and that'll give you all of the details appreciate everybody who's been checking that out but indeed checked out the reports that they were going to charge 900 for their rx 9070 xt and one of their marketing people came out and said uh no i could say that an 899 usd starting price point was never part of the plan which you could take to mean that hey they were never thinking about charging that much for it or you could look at the specific language that was used here and see that it doesn't mean that it was actually still going to be affordable and that the reports that amd was overcharging for these gpus has dropped the price and now is trying to get rebates to retailers which is why they had to delay the launch of the card for two months isn't happening it's kind of a he's saying not a whole lot while also uh, barely addressing anything and i will get into this in the comment response on yesterday Yesterday's episode, but suffice it to say that while they're specifically saying it's not $900, there's plenty of reasons why that $900 price point is still relevant. Very likely, the $900 to $1,000 that the Bulgarian retailer was quoting included VAT or value added tax. So it's tax added, which is not something Americans do, but that's also one of the reasons why graphics cards tend to be higher pricing elsewhere in the world because it includes the tax. We just don't do that. So when you remove the tax, you're looking at like a $699, $649 card, which is still way too dang high, especially when you consider the performance against an RTX 5070. It just didn't make sense. AMD was allegedly planning to overcharge for this GPU. They didn't announce it at CES because they were waiting to see what NVIDIA had. And instead of following their own compass on how to shape the market, they're just responding to whatever NVIDIA is doing and uh, suffering the consequences of that afterwards. Again, we'll get more into this during the comment response. There's uh, quite a few comments surrounding this, but you know what? You should be surrounded by today's video sponsor. You guys see how crystal clear I am? Nice, isn't it? Camera quality matters, and Obsbot understands that. They also understand how to be the sponsor of this video. The Obsbot Tiny 2 Lite is the answer to a high quality webcam at a reasonable price. Featuring a half inch CMOS sensor, the Tiny 2 Lite delivers crisp 4K video in both day and nighttime conditions. With this footage here being captured directly from the Tiny 2 Lite in 4K 30. The Obsbot Tiny 2 Lite doesn't just offer great video quality, but also great usability. Powered by AI auto tracking and made possible by a two axis gimbal, the Tiny 2 Lite offers body part tracking, hand tracking, and zone tracking, so your desired subject is always in frame. With body part tracking, you can focus on upper body, lower body, close up, or headless, allowing you to smoothly capture the action without missing a beat or unwanted distractions in frame. Hand tracking seamlessly follows your hand movements, making it a great way to capture fine details or movements in your content. Lastly, zone tracking allows you to define specific tracking and non-tracking areas, allowing you to move freely between multiple spaces while still remaining in view. The Obspot Tiny 2 Lite also features various preset modes, allowing customization of the PTZ position, image settings, background blur, and more to enhance your video production flow. With the built-in dual omnidirectional reduction mics and the option to shoot landscape, portrait, or flipped landscape, this tiny webcam is an all-in-one package for the convenient video capture. Backed up even more so by Gesture Control 2.0 for buttonless control over your tracking and framing. Fast and precise autofocus with phase detection and OSC Stream Deck and SDK support. Best of all, the Obspot Tiny 2 Lite works to maintain your privacy by automatically entering sleep mode Mode when not in use, or based on a schedule you can set up via the software. So you can check out the Obsbot Tiny 2 Lite today via the link in the description below to get serious upgrade to your webcam today. Thanks to Obsbot for sponsoring. Well, I can tell you that I want to use my Obsbot to check out this new NUC that's being reported that should be coming out from Asus, the Strix Halo NUC with the AI Max 395 Plus. It's got an 8060S GPU, which according to AMD directly can beat the 4070 laptop by 68%, which is just beautiful. I love to see this in an APU, getting this in a NUC seems lovely. We're also supposed to get the AI Max chip in an ROG Flow Z13, which is going to be a great form factor for it. Mini PCs, small little tablets with these massive APUs. I'm all here for it. I'm going to be gobbling this up as soon as it launches. See, I don't hate AMD. 
I want some of their stuff. And I also know I hate Apple. I want some of their stuff too, especially with Colorware announcing that they have rebadged the M4 Mac Mini with special retro colorways of both dark as well as beige. And I am enamored with this colorway that they've done. It does add a little bit to the price because they have to disassemble it, paint it, and then actually put it back together. But if you're looking for a unique Mac Mini, Mini PC, that's not that's not a Windows knock. Goodness, these are gorgeous. And that's what a lot of people have to say about the Pebble smartwatch. Basically, everybody who owned one when they had over 2 million units sold sung its praises to the high heavens. And now Pebble allegedly, potentially is coming back. This is happening because Pebble launched back in 2012, then sold its IP to Fitbit in 2016. And then Google acquired Fitbit in 2021. And then now finally Google has made Pebble OS open source so that it could be utilized by other people, potentially in a brand new Pebble watch. So one of the co-founders of Pebble is announcing that they want to bring Pebble back. However, this does include some sort of fanfare that needs to surround it. They have a website where they want you to sign up in case you're interested. If there's not enough hoopla, they might not actually release this. This could just uh, end up going nowhere, but you can get Pebble OS, the source code for that over on GitHub right now in case you want to check that out. But I know a lot of people are stoked for the Pebble Watch e-paper display last days and days in terms of battery life and was pretty performant for a smartwatch back in the day and reese better be performing the deals now not back in the day yo welcome back to you to deals bringing the hottest tech deals on the internet it's wednesday i have deals let's jump into them starting off we have the cooler master master box q300l micro atx case an absolute classic available in white for only 39.99 making it 11 dollars and one cent off but then next up we have the enemax lick max 3 sf 360 millimeter argb aio cpu liquid cooler down to only 44 dollars and 99 cents with the included promo code and then lastly today we have this gigabyte aurus 32 inch 1440p 270 hertz ips gaming monitor this is the x variant which has better peak brightness among other things going for 299.99 making it 400 dollars off and hey with that the deals are done you can find these and more linked in the video description down below but until next time i hand you off back to brett for the rest of your hot news cheers no reese it looks like an rtx 5090 for two thousand dollars is going to be a heck of a good deal when we uh, look back from the future, because President Trump announcing that he is investigating implementing tariffs on Taiwan with regards to their semiconductors, specifically discussing the fact that American companies have left American production at American fabrication facilities and instead have gone overseas to places like TSMC and that they're investigating doing a 25, 50 or even 100 percent tax, which this obviously would completely shake up the entire tech industry because of so many titans who have happen to use TSMC, AMD uses them, Nvidia uses them, Intel even uses them for Lunar Lake as well as their GPUs, Apple uses them, Qualcomm uses them. They're essentially being used by every major piece of technology that people can get their hands on these in this day and age. And this is happening after there's been a big push, the CHIPS Act, to potentially bring some foundries back to U.S. soil. TSMC is building plant right now. They're getting that up and running. Intel's looking to build out more plants that have also canceled certain projects. It does take a while for these things to get back online. So in any interim time that the tariffs are implemented, while the fabrication facilities have to be built out, it's going to take a lot of money out of your wallet to potentially upgrade to anything new. But one of the things to consider is it's going to hurt some companies more than others. you got companies like AMD who used to work with global foundries, but that appears to be dead. So they're basically exclusively TSMC. So is Apple. But then you have companies like Intel who obviously own their own fabs currently and they can potentially pivot some of their stuff. NVIDIA was allegedly not even looking to go back to TSMC for their next generation of GPUs simply because TSMC has gotten too big for their britches and is charging way too gosh dang much, according to NVIDIA. And so they were actually looking at pivoting to Samsung for their next generation GPU. So NVIDIA has options. Apple, I'm not quite sure who they would go to. I don't think that there's any local manufacturing that could potentially produce the chips that go into things like their iPhones, especially because they're usually the first major customer for any new fabrication node. But it's going to be an interesting future moving forward, seeing how prices shake and bake out with these tariffs that could potentially be implemented. But in case you were thinking, hey, well, if that's going to be the case, the 5090 might double in price to be worth $4,000. Maybe I should go get a 5090 right now. Well, NVIDIA is saying that there's going to be, uh, in their colloquialism, stockouts 
I love their language when they unlaunched the 4080, 12 gig, and now they got stockouts that might allegedly happen for the 5090 and 5080, essentially saying they're not going to have enough cards at launch and uh, don't be too disappointed if you can't get them. And you should definitely not be too disappointed if you got one of these bad boys, a GTX 10 series, GTX 9 series, but the writing is on the wall for their upcoming death. This is something that I talk about at least once every month or so here on Hot News, it's just the idea that NVIDIA is likely to drop driver support for these GPUs sometime in the imminent future. It used to be the average GPU lifespan for driver updates was between five to seven years. And we've been somehow remarkably blessed by NVIDIA giving us 10 years on the GTX 9 series. Now we're at eight years coming up on nine years for the GTX 10 series. However, it looks like it's just starting to wind down. Out. In a recent CUDA toolkit update, NVIDIA announced that they are phasing out Maxwell, Pascal, and Volta GPU support. So Maxwell is the GTX 9 series, Pascal is the GTX 10 series, and Volta, you don't need to worry about that. You never had a Titan V, I promise you. And if you did, you're a better person than me. I desperately want one of those. I think I might want to pick one of those up. Anyways, the release notes on this CUDA toolkit update say that these GPU architectures are considered feature complete and will be frozen in an upcoming release. And while this does not mean that there's going to be limited driver support from this point forward, this does mean that NVIDIA is actively looking at slowing down the release for these GPUs, to which a lot of people say whenever this is brought up, what do I need a new driver for anyways? Especially with something like a GTX 1080 Ti, we just reviewed it to see how it performs in modern games. You can check that video out right up there. And it's still fairly competent. And if it's not getting driver updates for the latest games, it's gonna continue to fall further and further behind in terms terms of its performance and not necessarily keep up with what the hardware is capable of because it's not getting the software enhancements. So it's a sad day. GTX 9 series. Oh man, those are old, right? A decade in GPU terms is, is very, very long. They were a good series of card, 970, 980 Ti. People enjoyed them, but I can see that one going away. I think the 10 series is going to sting a lot for a lot of people. 1070s, 1060s, 1080 Ti's are still very popular cards, especially when you look at something like Steam hardware survey, people are still slopping those GPUs up and uh, just, just start preparing, okay? This is not the end right now, but it is not the start of a brighter future, I'll tell you that much. But you guys had a past for me yesterday talking about things in the comments, so let's check those out. We got Man Man's Got Man saying, AMD needs a new marketing team entirely. Just clean the entire department and hire sane people. I have I have been frustrated with AMD's marketing team for, for quite some time. You know, the, the RX 6000 launch in Fortnite didn't seem very good. Uh, the mixed messaging about why they didn't announce the RX 9000 series on stage at CES. Oh, it was 45 minutes. We didn't have enough time, even though that like they have done this before in fewer minutes. And then also just uh, indicating that one of the reasons they didn't put it on the stage was because they were waiting for NVIDIA. They wanted to see what they had. And, and AMD is just not bolstering a whole lot of confidence with the moves that they're making with this GPU generation. As much as that pains me to say, I want to see them succeed as uh, a lot of you in the comments don't think that I think that way, but I do I do want to run an AMD GPU in my system. I want plenty of people to run them because I think NVIDIA's stranglehold on the market is not good. But AMD is not giving people a viable competitive alternative in many situations. And then somebody said, like the saying goes, AMD never misses an opportunity to miss an opportunity. Then MM4646 saying, you're laughing? Jensen had to sell one of his jackets so NVIDIA's stock price didn't drop even further and you're laughing? I wasn't laughing. I don't own NVIDIA stock because I feel like that's a conflict of interest for uh, all the news coverage we do here, but I uh, wasn't laughing. Uh, people losing money, not something that I tee hee about right now. Now we got a lot of people in the comments discussing the fact that it might have been a currency issue with why the $900 was being indicated for the 9070 XT because it could have been the Bulgarian Lev currency and that was being transliterated into US dollar. But there's plenty of people out on the internet who actually properly translated this and even people in the comments indicating that no, this was a discussion of AMD charging way too much gosh dang money for this 9070 XT and retailers are pissed. They charged them a lot up front and then said, hey, you have to drop the price even more and we'll have to figure out how to give you a rebate. It was essentially a rant against AMD. The retailer was not happy with them and it wasn't just that it was in Bulgarian Lev. It actually had to do with what the effective 
US dollar price would be. But again, that includes VAT, so likely it was probably going to be a little bit less when it comes to USD, which is why Frank Azor's comment of it was never $8.99. Well, in the rest of the world, it actually might have been because in the US, if you're charging $6.99 and everybody just adds VAT and export fees on top of that in their region, they might be paying $900 and that's still indicative of a very high price for general consumers. And we got conserve liberalism saying, riddle me this. Why are third-party 5090 cards not making a profit at $2,000? The Founders Edition 5090 has three separate PCBs, a 3D paper chamber, and lots of other things going on to make these systems work. Is that actually cheaper than just slapping a traditional cooler on it? Material cost is a thing, but so are assembly costs, R&D, and everything else that goes into making the Founders Edition or two-slot design. So this, I, th I think this is uh, this is missing the point, this, this uh, question, simply because what third party companies are making has nothing to do with Nvidia's R&D on their Founders Edition, right? Like they Nvidia might be making a loss on their Founders Edition. We have no way of knowing that. Really what determines how much money a third party company is going to make is the cost of their cooling solution, their PCB design which they actually do themselves and how much is Nvidia charging them for the chip that goes into the graphics card. Because if NVIDIA charges them $1,800, they don't have much wiggle room to put in to the design of the rest of the GPU. It creates a situation where, yes, technically they shouldn't be adding that much cost but if nvidia is just charging them a buttload directly it's going to create issues where they are now profitable in, to no fault of their own even if they reuse a cooler from a previous generation so i i don't think the founders edition pricing has anything to do with how much money these other third-party companies are making that's going to be determined by how much nvidia wants to charge them and according to reports it's a lot it's one of the reasons evga got out of the game because nvidia was just being uh very dismissive of their third-party companies. They were treating them as if all they did was slap a cooler on it and they didn't build any brand value for NVIDIA, which I would argue is uh, hubris in the highest form. But I'm going to be on my lowest form because I'm leaving this episode for you to wait for tomorrow's. See you then.